Saturday. Um, crap, it's been a long day. I can't remember what. Oh, yeah. June, June 27th, 2015. Um, I woke up at 5.20 this morning, so, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. Um, I know that doesn't seem like that early to early morning people, but considering most days I wake up at like 9.30, 10. <laughs> and I didn't get to sleep till like 1.30. And I also woke up early the day before. <laughs> and didn't get to sleep until like 2 the day before that. And yeah, I'm talented. <laughs> Um, oh, my trader's cancer's thyroid part six. Um, so today was the day that my mom was supposed to arrive. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of days together, bef well, like three days together before I have my surgery. Um, so would the, our time together wouldn't be entirely me getting, recovering from surgery. So, um, because my sister works for an airline, um, she was using, uh, the standby tickets that you can get for relatives of people who work for airlines. Um, so she, there's no direct flight from Portland to Salt Lake, um, with this particular airline. Um, so she had to fly down to, uh, the Los Angeles area and then was supposed to catch a connecting flight to Salt Lake. Um, so she got the first one out of Portland on standby, but the one to Salt Lake was full. And so she's not here. And I'm pretty bummed. <laughs> um, I had like all these fun things we were going to do tonight, and um, I was just so excited to see her because it's been so long. So. <laughs> Of course, uh, sorry, I just really miss my mom, <laughs> and this is hard to go through, and I know I'm an adult and everything, but, yeah, sometimes you just need your mommy. <laughs> um, and so, let's see, um, Thursday was a little bit of a hard day, I just was, um, dealing with stuff. I can't remember uh, when I called and figured out how much it was going to cost. Um, uh, but So Thursday the, the doctor's office called me and told me that instead of it being at um, my surgery being at a surgical clinic, they were going to change me to a local hospital. I assume because they're thinking that they want to keep me overnight. And it'll be easier to keep me overnight at a actual hospital than um, at a surgical center. I'm hoping it's not because they think there's going to be complications. Um, so that was, you know, it was a little bit stressful. And then Friday morning, I got the call from the actual hospital. Um, no, it was Wednesday they changed it. And then Friday, or no, Thursday, Thursday morning. Sorry, I get my days mixed up. Um, Thursday morning was when the hospital called and said, Hey, we need to pre-register you. Pre-register. Pre <laughs> you. Um, which normally, like in when I've had previous surgeries, that usually meant that they were calling to like find out what medications I'm taking and like all that kind of stuff. Turns out that's the phone call I get the day before the, the uh, surgery. The one I got on Thursday was the, how are you going to pay us call? <laughs> um, so I had to put over $500 as a down payment towards my uh, bajillion dollar bill. Um, <laughs> so basically they made me pay um, over, like about a third of the overall bill as a down payment. I have never oh. heard of such a thing. I mean, like, granted, I haven't been really paying my own medical bills for a while, but, like, don't you just put down, like, a couple hundred or something like that, and then, you know, make a payment plan? And they wanted to do a 12-month payment plan, but the payments were just more than I, than I thought I could handle for a month. 
uh, on a monthly basis or whatever. And so um, we're going with the 18 month payment plan. So I will be paying for the surgery for the next 18 months. Oh, and uh, my first payment is due July 15th. <laughs> my first payment after the 500 and some odd dollars. Yeah. You know, after I didn't work for two weeks. <sighs> Sorry. Money is stressful. Oh, and on Thursday morning, I also talked with the uh, people um, uh, through work who handle, like, medical leave and crap like that. And they were like, oh, so you don't qualify for FMLA? You haven't been working there long enough? I'm like, in a week, I will have been working there for eight months. How long do you have to be working for a place to qualify for FMLA? <laughs> I have no freaking idea. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so they're like, you don't qualify for FMLA, so you, um, you can apply for a leave, but it's different, um, you can apply for, like, payment while you're on leave and crap like that, um, you have to go get your doctor to fill out a form before the surgery, and then after the surgery, before you can return to work, you have to go get them to fill out another form, of describing what accommodations you may need after the surgery to make sure that, you know, we properly accommodate you and blah 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 legalese stuff. <sighs> Working and having surgery is a lot of work. <laughs> uh, and dealing with insurance and medical leave people and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just a lot lot to deal with and so I've just been feeling kind of stressed out about that and then um, Friday is when uh, the person one of um, one of the managers at work reminded me that uh, the one mile walk for hemophilia that I had signed up for was this morning <laughs> so she told me the day before <laughs> I had completely forgotten when it was. I thought maybe it had happened and they hadn't told me or something. I just kind of figured, like, you know, if it was going to happen, I would have, like, been informed, I don't know, a few days before or something, but not, like, the day before. But, you know, sometimes people forget. <laughs> not just myself. Um, so I, I was scheduled to work at 9 this morning. The walk was... Well, the, I I had to do the one mile walk because they said they didn't want to wait for me to do the five k walking, which I can kind of understand, and it was kind of a good thing because that meant that we were over in twenty minutes, and that was me walking the pace that the other people that I was walking with were going, rather than my normal pace because I probably could have gotten it done in like eighteen seventeen minutes, but um, that way I had people to talk to while I walked instead of just walking by myself like I usually do when I do these things because I do them by myself. And so did that, got done in 20 minutes. Basically I had to leave right afterwards because according to um, one of my bosses, but not the boss that actually went to the uh, run walk for hemophilia, um, the, the one that was actually working that day, he was like, you can only be half an hour late. So, the walk started at 8 in Salt Lake. I live in Provo. I work in Provo. I thankfully packed um, my clothing to change into for work, my scrubs. Um, I, so I did the walk um, with uh, two other people. We rode home. We dropped one person off in Pleasant Grove. And then... Um, Drove the rest of the way there. I literally ran in the door, clocked in, and then went and changed. And I was on the dot, 9.30. <laughs> on absolute, on time, no, in you know, attendance infraction, but barely. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, so then I started at 9.30. Um, keeping an eye, well not an eye, but uh, keeping 
uh, fuel for the buzz of my phone, which I'm technically not supposed to have on me at work, but given that my mom was, you know, catching a flight and I told her to let me know if she did actually get on the second flight because she knew before she left Portland that it was pretty full and there was a possibility she might not get it. Um, so I just told her to let me know. And about almost 4 o'clock I got the text that she hadn't made it. Um, so I was supposed to get off at 5, but uh, due to some scheduling uh, stuff, the only phlebotomist scheduled for the evening shift at the place where I work, where we use phlebotomists the entire time, were the two people who just barely got passed off as phlebotomists. <laughs> And so, um, you know, they asked me to go out on the floor about half an hour before I was supposed to get off. Um, I went out there and I just kept working. I was like, I don't have any reason to get home. I don't have any reason to stop. I might as well work. I'm going to need the money anyway since I'm going to be not working, um, you know, starting Tuesday of next week. So, and basically, I'm going to work my eight hours or whatever on Monday and I get paid for um, July 4th, the holiday pay, so I'll get about 16 hours for next week and that's it. Um, unless I can figure out how to get paid for the time that I'm taking off as like disability leave or something. So yeah, I need the money. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't until like an hour after I was supposed to get off, I just asked the manager, I was just like, Hey, so you're okay with me, like, staying later than I'm supposed to be here, right? And he was like, yeah, we need your help. And I was like, good, because I was supposed to be off an hour ago. <laughs> and he was like, okay. And I was just like, I'll keep working, I'm fine. <laughs> My mom didn't make it, so I'm just going to keep working. And so I didn't get off until about 8 o'clock. So I worked almost, um, like, what, like, 10 and a half hours? Yeah, <laughs> I did that, and I was exhausted, and I hadn't eaten since like 11.30, noon, whatever it was when I had my lunch. I was so thirsty, I hadn't had anything to drink since then. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could have asked for a few minutes to go and do that, but I just like, I didn't think about it. I was just working, I was working hard, and that was what need, needed to be done, you know? And so, I just, yeah, um, then... As you know, I don't have a car, so I asked my ride home. I was like, I am so hungry. If you stop somewhere, I will buy you dinner. Because <laughs> I just did not want to have to deal with trying to come home all tired like this and cook. So we stopped by Taco Bell. <laughs> I ordered like five things for myself, and I ordered a combo meal for him. <laughs> and at first he told me he didn't, he didn't want the soda. But then he totally drank it. <laughs> but, yeah. So I was just like, okay. Yay, I have food and I don't have to cook it. And it's a good thing. But, um, my mom gets in tomorrow, I think, sometime between like 9 and 10. Um, and then, I, I don't even know. Oh no, the front runner doesn't run on Sundays. I'm going to have to talk with my aunt and see if... The front runner's a train that runs from the airport to Provo, um, but if it doesn't run on Sundays, then uh, we'll have to figure out a way to get up there and pick her up, whether I borrow the car or go up with her or something. I'll go to church. My sacrament doesn't even start till 2.50, but I kind of don't care if I get to church because I just really want to see my mom. <laughs> Um, but I'll make I'm, I'll make sure I get to sacrament meeting. I just really want to go get my mom from the airport. Where I don't even know if she has a place to stay tonight um, in the Long Beach area. Okay, yeah, I'll give it away. Uh, Long Beach or the Los Angeles area. So if anybody is watching this tonight and you're around there, call my mom or call me if you know me and have my phone number or Facebook message me something. <laughs> So we can find somewhere for my poor mom to stay. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, 
I'm just going to try and stay occupied. I was thinking, since I haven't had a chance to go to the pool all this summer, and we just barely opened up the pool again at my apartment complex, that I might go swimming tonight. Especially hot tubbing for my poor feet. Oh my gosh, they hurt so much. Because I walked a mile, and then I worked for ten and a half hours. <laughs> That's a long time. Or ten hours, I guess, if you take out my lunch break. Or something. But whatever. It was still really long. <laughs> and I'm not used to shifts that, that are a lot, that long. So... I mean, yeah, I totally respect, like, the nurses and stuff like that who do long shifts, because just, I would not be able to do it. <laughs> but, um, my mom made sure that the flight that she's getting tomorrow is a guaranteed seat. So, it won't be standby, it won't be up in the air whether or not she'll make it. So, I'm glad about that. Because that way, I will get to see her for sure. Um, I kind of said that they had to use one of those. I hope it doesn't mean that D doesn't get to go somewhere or something like that, because that would suck. But, um, or that they had to spend too much money. <sighs> I worry. <laughs> I'm a worry wart. It's one of my, you know, strong suits. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Um, but, yeah. I just feel like the last couple days before the surgery would just be so much easier with her around. So, we're going to do stuff on Sunday, church and stuff, <laughs> and then on Monday, I think I'll see if maybe we want to go, like, to the temple on Monday morning and, um, something like that, and then maybe if we want to hit a movie on Monday night, because I'm getting as much sleep as I want Tuesday. <laughs> They're knocking me out. <laughs> So I don't think it's too big of a deal if I'm not well rested. <laughs> um, I don't particularly anticipate getting out of work very early because we are going to be having a lot of people trying to come in and get their six donations for the month uh, for the promotion that we've got going on. So, yeah. But anyway, bye.